we talked about standalone risk, now let's talk about portfolio risk. So before we do that, we're going to have to construct a portfolio. So let's assume a two-stop portfolio where we have a total of $50,000 in high tech and another $50,000 in collection. So the dollar amount really doesn't matter. It's just that we're 50-50 high tech in collections. So our portfolio's expected return is going to be a weighted average of the returns of the assets in the portfolio. But standard deviation is not a weighted average. We're going to have to basically do that same calculation that we did for a standalone standard deviation. So here's the formula for portfolio expected return. Now instead of multiplying the probabilities times the forecasted returns, we're multiplying the weights. And remember, in our portfolio, we're 50-50 um, high-tech in collections. So that means we're going to take 50% times the expected return of high-tech, which was 12.4%, plus 50% times the expected return of collections, which was 1%. So that will give us a portfolio expected return of 6.7%. Now, another way of calculating portfolio expected return is um, to basically do it the same way we did for individual returns. We could take the portfolio return or portfolio expected return in each state of the economy and then multiply those states times, times the probabilities. So for example, in a recession, our portfolio would give us a 0% return. In a below average re economy, it would give us a 3% return and so on. So if we take the probability of a recession times the portfolio return in a recession plus the probability of below average return times the portfolio return in a below average economy and so on, keep calculating those products and adding all the products, that will give us the same result. So now for the portfolio standard deviation, we have to go through that same long math. So it's not a weighted average. So we're going to take the probability of a recession times the um, deviation from expected in a recession. So expected is 6.7%. Our portfolio return in a recession is 0%. So 0 minus 6.7, and remember we square it to take away the negatives. And then we do the same thing for the other four states, add those up and take the square root. So our portfolio standard deviation is 3.4%, and our coefficient of variation, um, standard deviation divided by expected return, is 0.51. So what you should be noticing is that our portfolio standard deviation is lower than the standard deviation of either high tech or collections by themselves. And the reason for that is because when high tech is doing well, collections is doing poorly. But more importantly, when high tech is doing poorly, collections is doing well. So they kind of balance out and take off some of those really bad um, returns in both cases. So. Um, our standard deviation of the portfolio is even lower than the weighted average of our two individual securities. So the portfolio provides the average return of component stocks, but lower than average risk because of this concept of correlation, that the stocks are moving um, in different ways from each other, and so they're offsetting the risk. And so risk measured by standard deviation is typically 35%. And most stocks kind of move together because they're moving with the market, although not perfectly. Um, but if you find a stock that moves opposite, that can lower your risk significantly like we have here with collections. So combining stocks in a portfolio generally lowers risk because they're not moving or reacting to the market in exactly the same way. So that's what's going on here. So um, here's an example of two stocks, W and M, that are perfectly negatively cor correlated. So when one is doing well, the other one is doing poorly, so they offset each other. So a portfolio would have that green rate of return. It's exactly in the middle. If they're, po if they're perfectly positively correlated, they move exactly the same. 
And so if we put these together, you would just see one line. And that's what MM looks like. <coughs> so now if they're somewhere between um, perfectly positively correlated and no correlation at all, which would be a row of zero, um, it would look something like this. So we've got W and Y, and so together WY is somewhere in the middle. So now if we create a portfolio with one stock and then randomly add other stock to the portfolio, the portfolio standard deviation is going to go down as stocks are added because they're not perfectly correlated with, correlated with each other. And so the expected return of the portfolio probably wouldn't change too much. So diversification isn't going to affect your return as much as it affects your risk. But after about 40 stocks in your, that you've added to your portfolio, um, the riskiness of the portfolio really doesn't change that much. It's probably going to get to about 20%, which is down significantly from that 35% for one stock. But the more you add won't make a difference, and that's what we're showing in this graph here. So that dotted line um, that's going through the middle is that 20% range. So after, 20, after you get to 40 stocks, which is what you see all the way at the bottom, then the standard deviation really won't change very much. But if you've got one stock all the way over to the left, that's going to have a standard deviation of 35%. So that bracketed um, vertical line, that's showing kind of a sweet spot. Somewhere between 10 and 15 stocks is where you start losing the benefit of adding more stocks to your portfolio. So standalone risk is equal to the market risk plus diversifiable risk. Market risk is just the risk that you're exposed to because you're invested in the stock market. Um, everyone's exposed to that risk, but by different amounts. Diversifiable risk is the risk that you can get rid of by doing what we just talked about and adding more securities to your portfolio. So if you don't diversify and you just hold a one-stop portfolio, would you be compensated for the extra risk that you bear? No, because you can diversify and get rid of um, that diversifiable risk. So a rational investor would be concerned with portfolio risk knowing that they can take that down from 35 to 20. And so they're not going to get compensation for holding just one security.